Well, hello, everybody. It's your boy, Sam, again, a.k.a. The Train Mother Main. My alcohols and blah alcohols and child alcohols and blah, blah. <laughs> if you don't like my intro, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm glad that you're here. Um, I have had some requests for even crazier and louder and longer intros. That one might be my most profound and impressive yet. You let me know. Uh, I'm coming at you today with another how-to video, mainly due to frustration, but also uh, knowledge that I have acquired. So as you can see, I'm still working on the layout. If you are a subscriber, you know that if you're new to the channel, well, this is my 65 square foot end scale layout. It's coming right along. So if you've been a subscriber, you know I've been working on this layout. It'll actually be a year. Uh, I believe it was Valentine's Day of last year. I did the first video on this layout series, which was building the bench work. And yeah, it was definitely February of last year. Um, and if you're new to the channel, this is my just over 65 square foot end scale layout. Uh, you can go back and, like I said, watch the video series of how it was built and constructed. And obviously it's still very much in progress, but coming along nicely. One of the biggest things about being a model railroader, as well as building and enjoying your layout while it's under construction, is the ability to run trains while under construction. As you can see, I'm just running a little manifest here as I'm working on it today. One of the most difficult things about actually being able to just enjoy running trains while the layout is under construction is the fact that the layout is under construction. So personally, I'm a neat freak. I pulled out all this stuff just to show you guys for the purpose of this video, but normally I work on the layout and then clean it up after every work session so it stays as tidy as possible. Um, but the layout under construction is always dirty. There's always gonna be crap everywhere dust and debris and paint and glue and um you know if you're not like me tools all over the place and freight cars and locomotives and buildings and kits and screws and nails all over the place uh what i'm getting at is it's hard to keep your track clean um even if your layout is finished for 20 years and you just run trains every single day uh eventually over time your track will get dirty um this can really be a pain in the you know what um there's nothing more frustrating than having to fight your trains just to keep them running whether you're under construction or have a complete layout i've had some layouts that were done or close to done and so i was just running trains and since i did not have proper wiring and dcc blah 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 um, that was a hiccup improper track work or just not great track work was another hiccup but no matter how many problems that I fixed, that I was able to fix, the track still got dirty and it was still a big pain in the, you know what. Um, so my method and methods have changed over the years and I finally settled on the definitive answer to cleaning your track. It's the only thing I will ever do again. I will never spend another dime. I will never buy another tool. I will never buy another track cleaning car. The answer is free warm water and a shop rag again warm water and a shop rag i've tried everything sandpaper benefits gets everything off the rails really easily if i spill glue or paint all over this or decide to paint the tops of the rails sand it off good downfall is it scratches the rail heads meaning more dust and crap will stick to it so it works really really well but it does damage and long-term makes the rails more prone to being dirty. Won't do that again. Unless, um, I mean, if you paint the rails, you kind of have to, but that's about it. Unless you wipe them first, wipe the tops off. Um, it's just such a nice little train right there. <laughs> um, it's my railroad. Regular guy, Steve Brown, turned me on to taking a nickel and rubbing that along the rail heads and that worked partially, but did not actually take off any of the gunk. It would kind of just spread the gunk around to where the trains would run better for a few minutes, but 
within a half hour, the track was dirty again and the locomotives were, instead of rolling smoothly, they kind of gallop, you know, and they'll stop and gallop and, you know, do that. I bought a Walther's track cleaning car. Uh, over time, I decided to keep the box car just as part of my fleet and I took this off. This is the piece of the car that actually cleans it. And it, you know, obviously sits on the bottom of the box car and runs along the track. I took this off and just do it by hand. Uh, it's easier and it has more force when you do it by hand. And it works pretty well, but it's still not definitive. It only gets off like that top surface layer of um, gunk, as you can see. And then once you can see how well I've used this, and once it's kind of gunked up for life, um, it's kind of just doing the same thing, like the nickel, uh, just spreading gunk around, but not really actually lifting it up at all. Bright Boy. It's basically a pencil eraser, and it smells like one, too. Same thing. Uh, and this one actually really pissed me off because I spent like 12 bucks on it. Um, a brand name, I think it was Model Power or something. I'm not sure. Micro Engineering, I'm not sure. But look at that. This is only uh, after cleaning my track one time. Now it's just completely, I mean, if I wipe my thumb on it, the gunk that was on the rails is now on my thumb. So you think if I continue to rub this on the rails that that gunk's actually coming off? No, it's just smearing it around and wiping it into other places. Um, and you can tell when things are working because the locomotives roll freely, smoothly. The lights don't blink. They don't do that like kind of gallopy thing where like contact is good in one spot then not another and it's like kind of jumping. You all know what I'm talking about. Um, none of these things are foolproof. Rubbing alcohol. Uh, I mean, it works, but why spend the money on the alcohol? Maybe once every five times that I do the warm water, I'll throw a little bit of alcohol in there just to pick up the extra little bit of schmutz, like give it an extra nice clean. Um, but you know, it's something you got to actually spend money on, uh, and keep rebuying because you go through it and the water works just as well, if not better. Um, plus you don't have alcohol and the smell and the fumes and it's not all over your hands. Um, but again, I can see myself and I have occasionally still just kind of hitting some spots with it to, like I said, get that extra layer of gunk and grime off. Um, another thing. Before I started using the shop rag, I would use the alcohol on little different cotton pads, like a like a face washing pad or like disposable little cotton pads. And they leave little pieces of debris in your ties and on the rails and they'd get hung up here at joiners because there's obviously those edges and would get cotton schmutz everywhere. Not very, very helpful. Um, so the best method and again, the only method that I will use from now on or have been using is warm water and a shop rag. And you can see all the different spots. This is all crap, literally. No joke, I'll spread it out even more. This is all crap. I pulled off my rails today. Keep spreading this out for you and just literally, that's all. All these little schmutzy marks and you can tell because they're the width and shape of rails. That's all stuff I pulled off my main lines today. I didn't actually do any of the sidings or industries, just the main lines, because I was having a bunch of trouble again. And I mean, what is all that? Oxidization, little pieces of dust and debris, blah, blah, blah. Why is it black? What does it smell like? I don't know, but that's the crap that's on my track that was not allowing my trains to run, which was severely frustrating. As I say that, I derailed at the switch because I accidentally flipped the switch. So the simple method, I use my two fingers. I put them in like this and then just wrap it around so it's nice and taut around my fingers. This looks really awkward and kind of weird to do on camera, but um, I dip it in the water and then put it on the rail heads and the tips of your fingers, one on each rail head and just, you can even dig in your nails if you have a little bit of nails and just, you know, go right along the tops, scrape it. I go over one direction, go over one direction again, and then go back the other way. And then the good thing is I take a clean, I always keep a clean corner that I don't put schmutz on. Um, this isn't it, but I keep a clean corner. And once I've done a section hardcore, I go back with the clean corner, make sure it's wet as well and go over it again. 
And obviously, if there's no schmutz on it, you know, you've done your job. Um, it is kind of uh, just like cleaning track in any aspect. Um, you know, if you have ballast and scenery, just be careful. Uh, it didn't do any detrimental damage or has not to any of my ballast or scenery. But obviously, once something's permanent and glued down, you want to make sure it stays that way. So be careful. And again, tell your friends, this is free. Well, I mean, I guess you're paying 0.9 cents for the water and you might have to buy some shop rags, but essentially it's free. Uh, don't waste your time. Don't buy any stupid stuff. Don't do damage to your railroads. The title of this video is gonna be how to clean your model railroad track of some sort for free, all caps. It's not clickbait. You see it here first. I just cleaned my main lines. You've seen the train running around in a circle for probably 19 minutes while I babble on, but uh, it works and it's free. So tell your friends, subscribe to the channel. The reason I actually made this video is because I'm in like 79 model railroad groups on Facebook and I copy pasted in like 25 groups a couple weeks ago. What is the definitive and foolproof way that you clean your track? And of course, I got a thousand answers and a hundred different suggestions. The most common one was the Bright Boy, which I'm honestly pissed I spent $12 on a glorified pencil eraser that does not work. I don't even know what the hell I'm gonna do with this now. Um, the sandpaper does really well, but like I said, it scratches your rail heads. Uh, the nickel, temporary. The track cleaning car, temporary. The alcohol costs money, the smell, and nothing worked foolproof. So like I said, that's what I do. It works foolproof for me. You can do it as often as you need. And that's what I suggest. So again, thank you for subscribing. If you're new to the channel, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Please let me know in the comments what you do, uh, what works for you, what have you tried that works or doesn't work. Uh, let's help spread some knowledge around and tell people what to do and what not to do, just like I am. Somebody on here might say Bright Boy is the only thing they've been using for 50 years and it's foolproof, just like people in those Facebook groups said, and maybe that works for them, but it didn't for me. Um, some people might swear by, I've seen even people say that they put like WD-40 or like uh, transmission fluid or something on their rails, and I don't know, it just sounds like a nightmare, so. Let me know what works for you. Subscribe, like, comment. Train main out.